This is going to be seven things to do with your Bible. There is so much you can do with your Bible that you will never run out of things to do with it. It isn't like a video game or a movie or a CD or any other temporary thing that you're just going to get tired of and then want something else. There's always something you can do with the Bible. And a preacher can get up and preach hard against sin and preach a sermon to get people excited. And these sermons are good and they put people under conviction. But if he can't get them interested in the Bible, then this conviction or excited feeling that they have will be gone many times by, by the time they leave the church or by the time they eat dinner. But if a man can get a people interested in the Bible then that would do more for them than just a good sermon. The best thing a person can do for another person is to get them interested in the Bible. And that is one of the greatest things anyone has ever done for me. Someone asked me one time, what do I need to do to redeem the time? And that's an easy answer. The answer is to get a King James Bible and use it. And now I'm going to show you how to use it. The first and most obvious thing to do is read it. Isaiah 34, 16 says, Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. The same God who made the heavens and the earth is the same God who wrote a book and gave it to you so you could read it. And the same God who walked and talked with Adam and Eve is the same God who gave you his words. It is an amazing thing. God wants us to read his words. At least seven times, Jesus asked someone the question, Have you not read? And most of the questions you have in your life can be answered if you read the book. You talk to God through prayer, and God talks to you through the Bible. If you want an answer from God, then read the book. 1 Timothy 4.13 says, Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Some people say, I just don't understand the Bible, and that's why I don't read it. The best thing to do is read it, even if you don't understand it. And the more you read it, the more understanding will come. And I'd suggest setting a goal for yourself for the new year. Start out easy if you have to, with two chapters in the Old Testament and three in the New Testament. Uh, Jesus Christ was a Bible reader, and when he was attacked by the devil, he quoted Scripture, and over and over again he said, It is written. It is written. And you don't have this weapon that Jesus had if you haven't read because you don't know what is written. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of sunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God is your sword. And you can't fight very good with a sword if you don't get familiar with it. Think about it like this. The more you read the Bible, the quicker you will be able to swing your sword. 1 Timothy 4.8 says, For body exercise profiteth little. Bodily exercise doesn't profit much, but reading your Bible will. Consider it working out your mind. Reading the Bible is how you get rid of pet sins. Romans 12.2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Some of you may be struggling with the lusts of the flesh. Maybe you can't get over a video game addiction or a pornography addiction or a music addiction. And all these things war on your mind and your flesh will war with the spirit. And these things can take up residence in your head. And if you read the book, if you read the Bible, you will renew your mind. Your mind will start hating those things. So get a Bible reading plan. My plan changes. The last three months I've been reading 10 in the Old Testament and 10 in the New Testament. I heard some preachers say he reads 40 pages a day and gets through his Bible eight times a year. If you read 10 New Testament chapters a day, you can read the New Testament 12 times in a year. And it really doesn't take that long to read 10 New Testament chapters. But moving on, the second thing you should do with your Bible is meditate and memorize. And this is how that you hide the Word of God in your heart. 
Psalms 119.11 says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. One of the best ways I have found to hide the word of God in your heart is to write down verses on a piece of paper all through the day, take it out of your pocket and read it. Memorize a few words at a time until you have the whole verse memorized. While you're memorizing it and repeating it over in your head, meditate on it. Meaning, think about what God is saying and what you can get from it personally. Joshua 1.8 says, The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Psalms 1.2, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Psalms 119.15, I will meditate in thy precepts, and have respect unto thy ways. Most people today who meditate are getting hooked up with unclean spirits. But when you meditate on the words of God, you get hooked up with the Holy Spirit and you are doing the right kind of meditation. And something I do when I'm memorizing and meditating on the words is I'll turn the paper over and write down the thoughts that God gives me. And that is how a good portion of what I say in these studies comes about. It's stuff that I've wrote down and thought about as I was memorizing and meditating the verses. Most of my study is done while I'm working a full-time job, and you can make time for the Bible, and you find a way to get the words in your head no matter what life brings in your way. Some people are blessed with a job where they have the luxury of sitting in a chair and reading the Bible. Maybe you are a sec security guard or you work at a desk, Take advantage of the free time and meditate on the words of God. Did you know meditating and memorizing the verses will help you with your daily Bible reading? All these things go together. Each one will help you with the other one. You will be able to read the Bible faster and a lot clearer when you get to the parts you have memorized and meditated on. Reading the Bible will also help you memorize it. A good portion of the Bible you won't have to spend much time memorizing because you have read it so much that you already have it memorized. But moving on, the third thing to do with your Bible is study it. If you have a King James Bible, your King James Bible says study it. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Studying is different than just reading it. And it is different than memorizing and meditating on it. When you study it, you can take a word and get a concordance or a Bible program on your computer and search that particular word or phrase throughout the entire Bible. And this is how you make connections and even find out the definition of a word. And the Bible has a built-in dictionary. When I begin to study a chapter, I will read the chapter and then search keywords from each verse throughout the whole entire Bible and then write those references down next to that word. Your King James Bible commands you to study, and it also mentions searching the Scriptures. In Acts 17, verses 10 through 12, it talks about people who search the Scriptures daily, whether those things were so. In Acts 16, 11, it says, These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, and that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the Scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So every day you need to search the Scriptures, find out what's right, find out what's wrong. And if you want to know a lot of Bible, then you need to search the Scriptures. A good reason people get led off into a bunch of nonsense and false doctrine is because they aren't studying and they just take what their preacher says and they run with it and you hear a lot of these guys telling you to get rid of your commentaries and study bibles and they say just get a text only bible and this is because they are afraid their people are going to read something that goes against what they are teaching watch out for a man who tells you to get rid of your commentaries and study bibles it's funny he doesn't think you can get any help from any man but him and he doesn't want you to get study helps, but yet he wants you to sit under him in his studies. And that's a little fishy to me. Seems like he's trying to get people to only believe exactly like him, and he thinks he's the only one that's hooked up with God. And you can get a lot of help from commentaries, 
and a lot of help from reference Bibles. The Common Man's Reference Bible has been a huge help to me. It seems like it has a reference for every single word and every verse. Going verse by verse at a time through the Bible is the best way to study the Bible. I do a verse by verse of a chapter every week. And another good thing to do is get a topic to study each week. If you do this for a year, then you will have learned 52 chapters and 52 topics. Ecclesiastes 12.12 12 says, And further, by these, my son, be admonished, of making many books there is no end, and much study is a weariness to the flesh. Sometimes I can be studying, and I feel completely drained, and my head hurts, but you always come out better. The saying is true, no pain, no gain. Bodily exercise profiteth little, but much study will profit a lot. People post pictures of themselves on Facebook and Instagram after a long workout session. They're spending all their time on the flesh and trying to make their flesh look better. And the Bible is a lot more important. Bodily exercise profiteth little, but what you get from studying the Bible, how it strengthens you and helps you every day, is so much more beneficial. So study to show yourself approved. Look at each verse and ask yourself these questions. Who's talking? To whom is he talking? And what is he talking about? And remember, each verse can have more than one application. A doctrinal application, practical application, and historical application. If you remember all those things and rightly divide the Bible, then you're not going to be led off into false doctrine. Studying will help you with your memorizing and meditation. If you know what a verse means, then it is way easier to memorize it. If you know what the verse means, then you can really meditate on it. And studying the Bible and learning it also helps you with your Bible reading. If you're reading something that you understand, then it makes the reading a lot easier. All of these things go hand in hand. But the next thing is, you need to believe. Believe the Bible. This is probably the most important. If you don't believe the words, then they can't help you. If you don't believe the words and you run to the Greek to change it, then the words won't work in you. John 17, 8 says, For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Do you believe what the written word says about the living word, the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you believe his virgin birth, his godhood, his sinlessness? Then you need a King James Bible because all those characteristics about Jesus Christ are attacked in the modern Bibles. And sometimes someone who uses the modern Bibles, they're not a Bible believer. They don't believe God has preserved his word. All those new Bibles say something different. And there has to be one final authority. And I believe that is in the King James I was talking to a guy one time at work who was telling me I shouldn't witness to men at work if I was going to tell them to use a King James Bible. And he used a new version of the Bible, and I told him that I bet he believes like my King James Bible more than he believes like his per version of the Bible. I asked him if he believed in the virgin birth, the sinlessness of Christ, the deity of Jesus Christ, and he said yes. So I said, your version of the Bible removes those major doctrines about Jesus Christ. And he said, well, you're just being nitpicky. And yes, I'm nitpicky when it comes to the words because the Bible says a man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And if I don't have every word, then I can't live by every word. In the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel says the phrase, the word of the Lord 60 times in his book. And this shows he believed the word. And for this reason, God used him and showed him some things. And if you want God to reveal things to you from his word, then you need to believe it. Believe the Bible, and that will help you memorize it. Because most people who do not believe the book don't memorize it. How often do you hear of an NIV guy quoting a lot of scripture? And then if he does quote it, it's the King James Bible he quotes. 
The King James is just made for memory. Believing the Bible will help you read the Bible. Who wants to read something over and over and over that they don't believe? Sure, you have. You might have read a book five times. You might have read a book like Harry Potter a hundred times. But could you read Harry Potter and all these wicked books the rest of your life? Every day of your life for 60 years? If you believe the Bible, it will help you meditate on it. When you go to those verses about heaven and the millennial kingdom and seeing the Lord Jesus Christ, when they, when that stuff is real to you and you believe it, then you can meditate on it for hours. 1 Thessalonians 2.13 says, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because, that when ye, because when ye receive the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. For it to work in you, you have to believe it. But next, what you should do the, with the Bible is you should hear the word. And I searched the phrase, Hear ye the word of the Lord, and I found it seven times. Looking at it from the aspect of hearing the words in an audible voice, we can do this using audio Bibles. I'm a big user of Alexander Scorby. I also have an audio Bible by Peter Ruckman. I listen to them both daily. Listening to the words of God is a good way to redeem the time. And maybe you are in a situation where you can't read the book, but you can listen to your audio Bible. I'm to the point where I have convictions against driving in a car without having an audio Bible playing or preaching playing. My free time is consumed with getting the words of God in my head some way. Romans 10.14 says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Romans 10.17, So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The more you hear the Bible, the better. It will help you believe the words. Faith comes by hearing. If you listen to something all day, you'll end up believing it. Hearing the Bible on audio will help you with your reading. You can go through all those names in Chronicles and be able to pronounce them. If you hear some of these guys that can pronounce the names a bit better, then you'll be able to pronounce them better. It will help you with memorization and meditation and study. Just for the simple fact you're going to be more familiar with the words after hearing them repeat over and over on audio. And next, what you should do with the Word of God is apply it. If you get the Word of God in you, and you have 24-7 access to the words of God, then you have a great responsibility to know so much Bible, and not apply it to your life, and just flat out ignore the commands of God is very, very wicked. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The Bible will correct you and instruct you in how to live righteously. Romans 15.4 says, Whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. You can pick up the Bible and get practical application from any book of the Bible. Failure to the, apply the words of God to your life will take you to an early grave. The Bible says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to my word. If you want to have a long life, do what God says in the Bible. If you want to have an even better eternal life, do what God says in the Bible. That's how you're going to get rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. And the, lastly, what we should do with the Bible is publish it. Psalm 68, 11 says, The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. I'm a big believer in putting out the word of God in every way possible. We're living in a time when you can reach thousands of people from your living room. And you have a lot of prideful and closed-minded preachers who bash publishing the words of God by the way of the internet. They say, I'm so sick of all these internet teachers. Why is that? Because they are reaching more people than you? Maybe you should spend more time reading the practical things of the Bible and learn how to treat your brothers in Christ. Not everyone has to be just like you. 
Sure, there is a lot of false doctrine on the internet, but there is a lot of false doctrine down the road. When I drive down the road, I don't see a bunch of independent fundamental Baptist churches like these guys are that are so against the, the internet. I see a Church of Christ, a Church of God, a Methodist, Episcopalian, Seventh-day Adventist, and then I see maybe an independent Baptist every now and then, but they have rock music in their church, and they they don't even know the King James issue. Even though they use the King James, they wouldn't even know why that they use the King James. Don't let these closed-minded preachers talk you out of publishing the Word of God on the Internet or wherever else you want. This can be done through Facebook. If you are on Facebook, don't post about yourself. Don't gossip. Put up a Bible verse from a King James Bible. Record a video talking about your testimony. Put that on Facebook. Get a YouTube channel. Put out the Word of God that way. Right now, I'm working on my own audio Bible just for my own personal use. And I would encourage you to make your own audio Bible and you can publish the Word that way. And you can give it out to people if you want, but I use that, I say each verse two times in in the chapter, go back over and listen to it five times, and then it's like you've listened to that chapter ten times, it's very quick to memorize the Bible that way, recording your voice, giving a word of your testimony, or something from the word of God, is a great way to redeem the time and pub to publish his word. There are preachers and teachers who have been dead for years and they are still having their voice played every day by somebody somewhere. But this has been seven things to do with your Bible.